there for the Holy Spirit is a witness. Because actually in verse 15, the Holy Spirit makes a testimony and a witness. And what he says is this, and I'm going back into the NIV. This is what God says. This is the covenant I will make with them. After that time, says the Lord, I will put my law in their hearts and write them on their minds. And their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. So the new covenant, and it is a new covenant that God has made in these last days, is that sin uh, will not be remembered again. When we come to Christ, it's gone. You see, I'm sure you know the story of Martin Luther in the Reformation when he was crawling up on his hands and his knees up uh, the steps, I think, of St. Peter's in Rome and uh, confessing his sins as he went up, you know, until suddenly the Holy Spirit struck him with these words, Christ has died once, I don't need to do this. I don't need to do penance all the time. I don't need to be going up these steps all the time. Why? Christ has died once to pay the price and it's finished. Oof. But that's what the Holy Spirit is trying to remind us. This is part of the work of the Holy Spirit, to be a witness that this is the covenant that God promised he would make after this time, says the Lord. I will put my law in their hearts, I will write them on their minds, and their sins and lawlessness I will remember no more. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Elsewhere, Paul puts it like this. The handwriting of the sins we committed against us is wiped out. It's gone. Blotted out. Blotted out. Uh, I love that expression. Sin is blotted out, just as if you if if you've got writing in a book and you pour ink over the whole thing, it's blotted out. You can't see it. I always remember a simple illustration of this, and it's a very good illustration because that first time I went to Jerusalem by road, you know, 1961, when I became the first person to go by road from England to Jerusalem, we had to go through Syria. And amongst all the other things, yes, we were warned that in the communist countries we'd be put in prison, but they said, when you get to Syria, they'll kill you. Because if they, they so hate the name of Israel, if they see on your passport that it's valid in Israel, and we also had to have documents for the vehicle in those days. I'm going back a long time. You had to have customs documents and everything. So we had the passports, the customs documents. And so the British government was so aware of this, we had to have two separate passports. I still do have them. Two separate passports. And in one of them, it had blocked out the word Israel, not crossed out but so totally obliterated that you couldn't see it. And then we had a separate passport which said valid only in Israel, and we had to hide those Israeli ones, and believe me, that was the tricky bit. I'm pretty good at that. I think that's where I first learnt my smuggling techniques because I had to keep with the other guys that were with me. I had to hide all their second passports and conceal them in a way that they wouldn't be found, and they weren't. So what the authorities saw when they put us against the wall in Syria and said, oh, where are you going? We could truthfully say Jerusalem because Jerusalem at that time was in Jordan. And as long as we said Jerusalem and Jordan, we were fine. But it had to be if, we, if they had seen that writing, Israel, we would have been shot dead. Don't make any mistake. That was it. Now, this is exactly a picture of our sin. When Christ died on the cross, he blotted out. And the Bible is lovely when it says the handwriting of sin against us. 
blotted out so that it cannot be seen. Oh, thank God. You know, I was a sinner once. We were all sinners till we came to Christ. But what Christ has done in making that one of sacrifice blotted it up so that it doesn't exist anymore. That was the revelation which changed Martin Luther. And that's what I'm trying to impress on you. We don't have to come back and confess the same sins. They're gone. They're gone. They're gone forever. Disappeared. Blotted out. Take naps. That's very interesting because... As you know, with things like modern computers and even modern telephones, um, it's very difficult to obliterate what's on it. <laughs> Once it's on the internet, they say it's, um, it's very difficult to remove it. But with the blood of Christ, it's blotted out all our sin forever. But what verse 16 Paul is saying, this was the covenant that God made. And it's very significant that not only that he made the covenant, but that with this, Christ was the fulfillment. And, you know, we've got to, verse 23, hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Verse 35, don't cast away your confidence. We need patience but we will receive this promise in a short time. Verse 37, for a little while, and that he that is delaying will come back. And verse 38, the just will live by faith. So no longer are we looking at judgment, we're looking at Christ, at the fulfillment, at the completion. And it's absolutely clear uh, of the compassion. It's a fearful thing. At verse 31, fearful to fall into the hands of the living God. Uh, verse 30, we know vengeance belongs to me, says the Lord. But all of this is gone. The punishment is gone. We have the new covenant. So in verse 35, don't lose that confidence. We just need to be patient that when we get into the kingdom, we're going to be welcomed in by Christ himself. And we live by faith that what God has done is perfect. I shall continue this next time. <laughs> 